One of the things that we are called to do quite a lot is work with organizations on uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy. There are a lot of organizations, and maybe yours falls into this category, that have been doing equity, diversity, and inclusion related work for years, or, or maybe not, um, and have been doing it in a way that is what I would describe as more kind of programmatic, right, where you uh, look around for different months um, or, or celebrations throughout the year. You look across the calendar and you say, where is there a specific heritage day or cultural celebration that we might be able to highlight? We put into place things like potlucks. Maybe we have um, some opportunities for brown bag discussions with our employees talking about different kind of topical issues that come up related to very specific cultural groups. Maybe we have very specific kind of philanthropic goals that we have in very specific ways with targeted groups in the community. Maybe we have very specific kind of hiring goals or expectations that are broken out by targets that allow us to be able to really pinpoint very specific employee population gaps that we want to fill based on our local representation or national representation or whatever our goals are. Those are all kind of programmatic approaches to equity, diversity, and inclusion. And they're the thing that I would consider a more traditional approach. And though, by the way, they haven't been working so well. We wouldn't be in the midst of a anti-Black racial equity movement that is not just about the, the killing of, of Black folks, but it's also about interrogating systems and structures across all of our institutions. And it's not just in the United States. This is absolutely a conversation that's happening globally. But what it's also ignited and kind of illuminated is the fact that structural racism and barriers exist in every part of our society, not just in the social elements, and not just in kind of our structures that have to do with policing or with our legal system or with our educational system or with healthcare. They also have to do with our organizations and with our, um, the way that our organizations pursue strategy. So equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy is something that a lot of us or a lot of organizations are really trying to figure out how do we do this in a way that is consistent with this very large scale, very new, very large contemporary conversation that's happening and also taking into consideration the fact that we are in uncharted territory for a lot of us, right? For those of us who have been doing equity, diversity, and inclusion for a long time, we've been doing it in ways that people are saying wholeheartedly and very convincingly, it doesn't work, it's not working, so you're really going to have to reconceptualize it. And so it's going to take very different ways of kind of imagining what the possibilities are and what our expectations are and what our measures of success will be in order for us to really uh, create strategic paths that are going to allow us to be able to get our resources in line and to make sure that we have a real clear sense of prioritization and action. With that in mind, one of the things that we do with clients when we do EDI strategy work is really help them um, understand what a change agenda involves, right? How is it that we identify what a change agenda should look like and where does it come from? For us, a change agenda is really about identifying the, the understanding, the clear articulated understanding of what it is that we're going from that we are going to. Like what is our from to agenda, right? And once we understand what the current state is and we also understand what the future aspirational state is, then the gap in between can help us to identify places where we um, very actively and in a very uh, focused way uh, concentrate our resources and our efforts. Now, the way that I just described that, it sounds probably like a gap analysis. A gap analysis isn't exactly the same. What we really push clients to do is to think in a very aspirational way. So a lot of times traditional ways of thinking of gap analysis is we had a target for X number of representation at this level and we slightly didn't make that target. And so the gap is that we need to get up by blah, blah, blah percentage points in order to meet our own target. Or we see that there are other ways in which we are not exactly in line with what our other kind of numeric based targets are. And they oftentimes have to do with things like representation and or kind of quantitative goals that are very easily kind of countable and also are connected to some of those traditional systems I said, I just said are not working that well for us, right? And so 
What I'm suggesting is a change agenda that forces us, in addition to identifying um, kind of gaps, right, We're using some of the more traditional ways of gap analysis, but really building on that and saying, I want us to really think about where it is that we're going and what the future state not just can look like, but it should look like. And it's going to require that we have thought partners who help us to really interrogate our own thinking about what's possible, about what's um, expected, and about what the right level is in order for it to be truly strategic and actually be able to um, intervene with some of the systems that people are right now saying require interrogation and overhaul. So one of the things that we really try to do is push our clients to think about um, how it is that they think about what their goals are, how it is that they identify what their measures of success are and push them to really understanding what is the, the new expectation and the changing expectation and then how they how they bring their own organizational culture and values and leadership style and philosophy to breathe life into the, some of those expectations. So what we've done here in this post is we've provided kind of a, a change agenda that illustrates some of the ways in which equity, diversity, and inclusion, anti-racism work is changing based on some of the things that we see and are witnessing and also, you know, to try to be helpful as you are reconceptualizing uh, your own change agenda. So the way that this change agenda is described is that we are moving from kind of traditional diversity and inclusion, right, where we are thinking about kind of representation and or sort of behavioral uh, inclusion. And we're moving past those and building on those to also include very explicitly expectations about equity. And equity in and of itself requires a whole level, a whole other level of interrogation of systems and systemic intervention, as well as really very specific and targeted ways of debiasing our systems. And also really understanding what it means to bring anti-racism into our organizational practices. Anti-racism, regardless of whether or not your organization decides to ever use this language, is incredibly important for you to understand and to know that without anti-racism and without really being able to do the deep work associated with rooting out racist structures and, past, um, and practices and systems inside of your organization, you are never going to um, truly be able to get to a place of um, experiencing the kind of inclusion and belonging that people aspire to. And so anti-racism is a necessary effort, significant undertaking that is going to be the important groundwork that is going to allow for us to be able to move towards those things that are more aspirational, like inclusion and belonging. This um, change agenda also includes moving from things like awareness building, where we do very topical and specific training to introduce people to concepts or language like implicit bias or cultural competence, to also being able to demonstrate behavioral proficiency at all levels and in all roles of the organization. That kind of expectation of measurable, demonstrable proficiency is a, absolutely a new expectation where diversity and inclusion activities and programs have traditionally focused on, heavily focused on recruitment and pipeline development. New and contemporary ways of thinking about this focus more heavily on processes and systems. Not to say that recruitment can, doesn't continue to be an issue, but we really have to make sure that as we are thinking about how it is that we bring people in to the organization, we are also really looking at and interrogating the systems that have prevented people, especially black people or black indigenous people of color or black and brown women from fully being able to be um, represented in our candidate pools and also at all levels of our organization. The other thing that is represented here on the change agenda is that traditionally speaking, diversity and inclusion have, sit, have sat um, either solely within HR or been very largely the expectation of the HR function. Now in a contemporary best practice, it is contemporary best practice that equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism work and outcomes are relegated to all parts of the organization and sit squarely with the business unit leaders and their expectations for demonstrable progress towards equity, diversity, and inclusion, and anti-racism goals. So this, this chart is just meant to kind of give you an example of the fact that 
the landscape has changed, it's changed quickly, and it's changed in ways that are really important for you to understand as you continue to chart your own change agenda and to think about kind of prioritization of your own efforts, prioritization of your own resources. The other thing that's going to really require is that all of us leaders make sure that we understand that regardless of what responsibility we felt we had for equity, diversity, inclusion, anti-racism in the past, we are fully responsible at this moment for making sure that equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism are present in our organization and that they are having a positive impact on our organization's systems and structures, and also that we are going to be held accountable for outcomes differently than we ever have before. We would, of course, love to continue to be a resource as you do your ongoing work related to either educating yourself or creating an equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, anti-racism strategy for your organization, preparing your leaders and managers to make sure that they understand what their roles are and helping them to develop kind of the proficiency that is absolutely expected of them now and in the future. Just let us know. We're always here. And we hope that this has been a helpful resource for you. And let us know additional things that we could share with you that would be helpful as you continue on your journeys.